Today I'm going to discuss the topic of David Sinclair again uh, with some new information and existing information that I've been given by multiple people in the industry and also from a couple PhDs that worked with David Sinclair directly. Uh, I'm not going to name people by name. However, I can tell you this is real information that at some point, probably more likely than not, will be owned at some point. They will uh, accept uh, um, credit for their public comments uh, in the public domain. I do believe this at some point because um, they've made these statements. Multiple people have made statements to me concerning David Sinclair, concerning dismay for his public position over the past months. And... It's, it's gone on so much, and I sort of alluded to this in conversations that I'd been having these conversations. Uh, in a nutshell, is David Sinclair a fraud? He's been called such by some people who know him well and have known him for years. That doesn't mean I don't want him to rehabilitate his public reputation. I actually do. I want him to, and I'm going to talk more about that, and I'm going to talk about why. But first, I want to address these comments that people have been giving me about uh, David Sinclair. We're not talking about the hundreds of anti-David Sinclair comments in the videos. What happened is I spoke out against what he was doing with Metro International Biotech quite early, quite directly, quite specifically. You can look up those videos, they're on my channel. CEOs began to reach out to me. Scientists began to reach out to me. And they didn't wanna go on the record, but they, they felt compelled to report their situation, their realities, with dealing with this situation and with David Seclair in the past and present. And there was a lot of frustration and dismay. Even from one CEO who's particularly close, speaks to, has spoken to David Seclair quite often over the years. Um, he felt like, wow, if David Seclair was aware of this, as he was promoting NMN for years. If he was aware that this was coming, that's pretty evil. Now, this is, this is really harsh language considering who it's coming from. The disappointment from one founder of a $100 million supplement company, not because of his own personal interest, just his disappointment in David was shocking, was, was, was mind-numbing. And... I also heard that, I mentioned PhDs that worked with him. Um, Charles Brenner has publicly referred to David Sinclair as a fabulist. Now, you look that up, I had to because I hadn't heard that term recently. Uh, basically, he, it's someone who's dishonest, someone who's presenting evidence as part of a lie. And if you look at his reputation with resveratrol, whether or not you believe in it or not, at least he misrepresented some of the effects of anti-aging of resveratrol. And I've never claimed that I've reversed my age in the sense that I'm going to live longer. Like this is some, uh, the fountain of youth doesn't exist and uh, probably will never exist. If we ever get there, if we're ever able to extend life, great. We've been extending life for 100 years through scientific breakthroughs. I don't think NMN or resveratrol or supplement taking is any different than it's just another in a long line of life extension methods that we've addressed using science. I do think we're going to extend life. I don't think we're going to live forever. And, and I think that's a kind of a misnomer. And that's where the fabulism takes place. Can we live forever? Can we live 500 years? So I have received this information from multiple people that he wasn't always honest in their dealings. Uh, one PhD said that he lacked his company lacked ethics and left the company he was working with that David Sinclair was involved with. So there's a trend. It wasn't two people, it was six. And all knew him personally on some level. Now let's speak to the current state of Inman. I will get to the point that there are some positive signals coming out of David Sinclair and that I do want him to re rehabilitate his reputation in a moment. But first of all, let's talk about some of the newest research in NMN and how this plays a role in this whole story and what's playing out with FDA trying to ban NMN if you're not keeping up. So the scientific journal Nature released an extensive study just a week ago that shows low NAD levels cause heart disease. Now, when you're living in the world 
of NED precursors. And you're seeing all of these benefits, and now the science is stacking up. We have Charles Brenner pointing to cases where NAD boosting helps prevent cancer and treat cancer. Now we have heart disease. Now this study, I'm going to put the link in the description. The terminology is quite medical and scientific in nature. We're going to decipher that with Dr. Shi, who was on the show recently. And we're going to talk to a cardiologist he's been working with to successfully treat heart disease. This is going on right now. So NAD precursors are treating cancer, heart disease, cognitive decline, COVID, long COVID, not to mention the many anti-aging benefits. Again, health span benefits. We're not talking about necessarily lengthening lifespan, although if you're not sick, you might not die as early. The military is using NMN in a study right now to treat sleep deprivation of its soldiers. So FDA is at odds with all of these disease prevention and treatment realities. They're at odds with the military at this channel. I'm making progress. We're now talking to a doctor at the VA in the LA area, and we're connecting the dots to get NMN, again, NED precursors, to soldiers with PTSD as a trial balloon to see if we could treat, finally start to treat, make some progress, turn a corner on this terrible, debilitating disease affecting our soldiers. Again, FDA is at odds with this. How? They're trying to make NMN a little private prescription drug only available for a few conditions, a few approved prescribable conditions. That's right now. They're, they're using a 30-year-old Deshay law to pursue this. Now, he may legally be in the right. David Seclair, according to Dr. Brenner, may be right legally, but the law needs to be changed. And that's why FDA adopted a policy of enforcement discretion with NAC. The law was outdated. And it's outdated here. In fact, we have a de facto enforcement discretion because they've not taken any concrete action up till now. I don't believe anymore NMN is or should be considered a supplement. I also don't believe NMN should be considered solely a prescription drug. Because of the number of diseases that NMN is showing benefits for, while it can be sold as a supplement, I believe the cost should be down. I believe it should be, there should be oversight, but it should no longer be considered at the top of a nutrition pyramid. If you look at things where supplements lie and drugs are off on their own treating disease, right? But if you look at the nutrition pyramid, I think it's closer to the foundation. I believe NMN and NAD precursors in general should be considered micronutrients. So there are give or take seven of these. You've got carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, which I think NMN should be considered, as well as NR and niacin. You've got minerals, fiber, and you've got water. Now, water is essential for life. We know that NAD, by David Seclair's own admission, all living organisms require NAD to survive. So NAD is on an even par with water in that regard. Now, you can survive with some water, you can survive with some NAD. But for better health and wellness to repair the body, you need more water than a little water. Just enough water, it's not enough for health, nutrition. So that's why water is considered a micronutrient, because more of it, not because you, you could survive without any of it. You can't survive without any water, you can't survive with any NAD. But if you have more than adequate, a generous amount of water and a generous amount of NAD, now you're providing essential nutrition for your health and wellness. So micronutrients is the category more and more because of all of these different well-being conditions. Because we can use NMN to fight cancer. We're going to talk about on, a, on an upcoming episode very soon. We're going to talk to, as I said, Dr. Shi and a cardiologist about how heart disorders are being treated right now with NMN and all of these other conditions. I think David Sinclair created a massive tidal wave with NMN in NED precursors. And he's successfully beat the drum. But then he jumped off that wave and he's deviated. He's pulling an around N in football terminology. And he's trying to take ownership of NMN. I think he saw dollar signs for his research, for whatever, self-enrichment, whatever. I think he probably 
convinced himself that he's responsible, and he is greatly responsible for this tidal wave of, of NED precursors. And Charles Brenner, thanks to his work with NR, is also responsible. He's taken a different approach. He's not anti-NMN. He's not, he just believes NR is slightly better or better, but he's not anti-NED precursor. The only thing he pointed out in his interview that I had with him is that David Sinclair is within his legal rights. I think those laws have to change. I think if you sit down and talk to a judge or to Congress and you're pitted against the FDA on this topic and you say, yes, by the letter of the law, you know, you can use NMN to treat disease, but you can also use it to do all kinds of things. It's a nutritional substance that can be used for any number of things. And this evidence is mounting. In other words, are you going to go by the letter of the law? Are you going to look at the better public good, the broader public good. Cancer sufferers right now. We're going to wait 10, five to 10 years before this reaches a broader audience. You're going to make an exclusive drug, which by again, by David Sinclair's own admission, will take two to three years. And then it will only be a handful of conditions, a very small subset of the population. In the meantime, people are just supposed to continue to suffer? When we found a substance that's more and more readily available, prices are coming down, quality is going up, and we can treat these conditions now. This is not in the better good. This is not in the interest of the better good for humanity. They're just on the wrong side of history. I think David Sinclair can look up synonyms for restore, and he can follow that list and do those things to rehabilitate his public image and get back on board. Don't come on this show because I know you probably won't, David. Come on a program and begin this process. Now, we've, we're seeing positive signals. On his Twitter feed, he's starting to share NMN research again in the context of NMN as a supplement that you can take to treat various disease. That was sort of suspended for a while. I think he's reconciling with the fact that we're going to get an enforcement discretion decision. I believe that based on all of the evidence up until now, listening to Dan Fabricant, listening to different people. I'm going to go a step further on this channel. Recently, I announced in April, I'm going to begin tr transferring funds over to Brad Stanfield for his rapamycin study. I've also said that I'm working together with supplement company to get NMN to soldiers who suffer from PTSD. We're going to go a step further. I'm going to join the legal fight. With your help, subscribe, send uh, donations over through Patreon or through Super Thanks. All of that money is going to be applied to joining the legal fight to keep NMN available to the broader public as a supplement. And again, I don't care what you call it. If you want to call it a nutritional vitamin, great, right? But it, it, is, it should be available. You want to get hung up on definitions, FDA, fine. Do whatever you do, but keep it available to the broader public to serve the broader public good. Stay tuned for more updates on this topic. It ain't going away, folks. See you soon.